Welcome back guys. Thanks for joining in. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more suppressor news and suppressor review videos coming soon to the channel. But guys, today we are taking a look at a nine millimeter PCC dedicated can from AB Suppressor. This is the F4L. And the L stands for the long version because they do have the original F4, which is about 1.1 inch shorter. But this can here does have a lot of pros as well as a few cons. So without any further ado, let's get down to it. So guys, the F4L from AB Suppressor is marketed as a PCC can. And what do we mean by PCC? Well, of course we mean stuff like the MP5 or we mean something like the GHM9 perhaps. These are fixed barrels that are non-moving. You just have the barrel, the direct thread, and you're good to go either radially delayed blowback or roller delayed or fixed barrel with direct blowback. All those options out there, but those are your PCCs. Now, what they don't market it for is pistols. And if you don't know why, or if you're new to suppressors, and this might confuse you a little bit, but in order to operate on a standard firearm or a standard pistol, you have to have something called a Nelson device or a booster assembly with a piston, which is basically going to allow it to absorb some of that recoil motion. And it's going to allow the suppressor to basically not be as heavy and pull the barrel downward, which can then cause a malfunction. So it needs to be a fixed barrel. Now, in the case of something like this, this is the Beretta M9 A4. It's non-tilting because it stays interlocked. When it goes back on the recoil, we notice the barrel doesn't come up. And as a result, we don't have that interaction where we have to worry about the weight of the suppressor completely pulling it down and causing a jam or a failure to feed, failure to eject, or anything of that nature. Now, I will say that in this configuration, because we do have the L version, which is 1.1 ounces, or sorry, it's, it's, it's almost an ounce, heavier than the F4, Four, which if you want something that you want to reliably run on a Breda, I would go ahead and get the F4 just because that little bit of less weight makes it go a lot better. But in our case, we wanted to go ahead and go with the F4L because it's going to be primarily used on a PCC. However, after today, it might live on this. We did have to go ahead and change out and do some modifications. So we picked up some tuning kits essentially from Landing Tactical Technologies and we went ahead and got a new recoil spring, which is about three pounds lighter. And we got a new hammer spring, which again is about three pounds lighter, which if you think about it, as you're going back on your recoil, your hammer, because it's the double action, is going to come all the way back. So if we reduce this, we're reducing the drag and making it go a little bit easier back its motion. And then of course your recoil spring itself, again, we're bringing that to make it lighter. So there's less resistance. So we're going to have less complications. Now this is a G series, so we can decock and there's no safety it goes right back up. But getting back to it, guys, the F4L, again, marketed primarily as a PCC can, is something special. Because it's so light, because it doesn't add much of a footprint, you get a very solid can on a PCC that can keep it into a relatively small package. But it does meet, or let me say it does have some downsides. First downside, of course, is in order to be so lightweight and compact, they did have to go away and not do the standard thread pitch on a removable uh, direct thread adapter. You can't remove it. It's welded onto there. So what you have is what you get for life. Half by 28, you cannot change it. You can get the SIG variant if you want to go for an MPX PCC. Uh, they have it already pre-tapered, so you get a nice good fit. And if we go to our second con, it's the fact that it's not really any kind of reduced blowback system or RBS or reduced back pressure system, however you want to call it. Uh, like something like the Huxworks Cash 9K, which is ported to a point and has an RBS system, or like this BNT, which is an SD system. Again, fully ported for an RBS. It's got reduced blowback. That keeps all the gas from building back in the gun, getting everything gunky on the inside, and of course, back at your face. There is a big move from the military, from military contracts, to reduce the impact of blowback from guns, to reduce the exposure to lead and everything else that comes with it. So they are going to an RBS system. So is this the right move? I mean, for what the can offers, yes. And one of the comments that people are going to make is that why would you put it on a Beretta? A Beretta is a terrible host. It throws so much crap back at your face. Well, that's true if you're using a Nelson device. However, if you're direct threaded and have a light enough can, we actually noticed there really wasn't any blowback from this. We didn't get any speckling all over our face. And 
the performance out of it was honestly one of the quietest systems I own. This was quieter than an MP5. It was quieter than our BNT SD system. It is just a quiet package. So in the pros category, it's a very lightweight can and it actually performs phenomenally. The F4L has 11 integrated baffles by design and it's made from grade five, 100% titanium. So we all know what that means, right? During nighttime, expect to see a little bit more spark, a little more flash. So you're gonna have a little bit more light pollution coming out of the end of your gun. So buyer beware. Now there are a lot of options for the PCC market. So is this something I can actually recommend? Well, when it comes to PCCs, I think it's going to be a fantastic suppressor for your everyday PCCs. For the Beretta fanboys out there, I think it's a good option if your Beretta is able to handle the weight. And I would honestly advise you go ahead and get the F4 because it's gonna have that little bit better reliability in the grand scheme of things. Now, coming in retail, we're looking at about 699 MSRP. If you were to pick it up from Silencer Shop or one of the other Capital Armories or someone else that offers it for you to be able to get it ordered, which this is where a lot of suppressors actually fall into. So you do have a lot of options out there, but what you're not gonna get is something that is such a small, lightweight package that offers incredible sound performance. And there's no barrel restrictions for nine millimeters, so it is also full auto rated. So with that, let's go ahead and see just how it performs and how it compares to the Cash 9K, the BNT systems, and then we'll finish off with how does it actually work on a Beretta. All right guys, so we've gone ahead and made it to the suppressor actual sound quality. Now we've got our F4L as long as a couple of other things, the Cash 9K for an RBS style system that's lightweight, that's real popular on PCCs, as well as a dedicated SD system. With the SD system, we've gone ahead and left it running with 150 grains, so the entire operation of tests is gonna be done with this 150 grain Syntec ammunition, which is one of my favorite shooting ammos, especially for the MP5. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get the baseline comparison of what I think sounds pretty good, aside from first round pop. But remember the downside with an RBS system is that, well, you get a lot more pop at the very beginning and they're not the quietest of cans. Now this is an SD and these rounds I believe are already going about 900 feet per second. With the SD system, it's probably gonna be like 700 feet per second. Uh, let's find out. So. So first round pop obviously is there. Again, gotta burn off all of the gas that's inside the can before it even starts. Second round, insanely quiet. Okay, I've only shot this really with 115s, 124s. 124 sound fantastic, but wow, Syntec really does sound good on this gun. So let's just go ahead and clear it out and move to the next gun. All right, guys, so now let's do another baseline comparison. This is gonna be with the Huxworks Cash 9K. Now, again, this is an RBS can. It's designed to keep the gas maximized going out so you get less blowback into the gun. That keeps the gun cleaner, that keeps your face cleaner, that keeps your lungs cleaner, and everything else that's associated with anything that's gonna do with lead. So, without further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and again, send a couple down range just to get that baseline of how's it sound. Uh, and it's got that terrible safety on this one. First round pop, noticeably louder than the SD system. Second round, still pretty loud. Now, for all of you naysayers out there who says, you not hitting anything, I'm, I'm not hitting that. I'm not aiming at anything. We are strictly trying to get the qualitative analysis of what this sounds like, thanks to our shotgun mic that's located just above the camera. All right, let's go ahead and switch things over now and try the F4L, see how it sounds. All right guys, so we've gone ahead and changed out to the SP5 MP5 variant. This is the semi-automatic because our fully automatic didn't have the threads on it. And again, remember that con I was talking about, it is direct thread only. So 115 grain, 115, 150 grain Syntec ammunition. We're not trying to hit any targets. Let's just see how it sounds. Now, honestly, it sounds pretty stinking amazing. And I've run quite a bit of PCC cans at this point. And again, I do notice that reduced back pressure systems tend to be 
louder in general, especially on that first round pop. In the case of the Cash 9K, it was every shot. But let's see if we can do something special because we have two MP5s because how often are you running two MP5s? So let's go ahead and left hand slap. We're already hot on the other one. So let's see if I can manage this and see how they sound and see if you can tell which one fired. <laughs> That's so noticeable. Okay, let's go ahead and drop this to safe. Those terrible safeties. And just because we have it out here and this may not even make it to the footage because YouTube hates when we have fun, but how does it sound on some FA, right? I hit something still down there. So again, RBS system's a little bit louder and I think you could tell the difference. But the big question of the day is, does it work and how does it sound on the Beretta M9A4? All right, guys, so now we've got our Beretta M9A4. And again, so non-tilting barrel, you've got a little breech here that basically is locking it in place when it's going back into the open position. It does still not have a locked breech, which is one of the other requirements if you wanted to use a non-Nelson device. So is it ideal? No. But remember, we did go ahead and upgrade the hammer and the recoil springs to land in tactical technologies. Uh, I believe we're doing a 12 pound recoil and we're doing a 13 pound hammer. So that's gonna help us get some good reliability. And we ran this a good bit today already. We had some pretty nice success. We had a couple failure to feeds when we were doing testing, cleaned the gun a little bit, uh, and then went ahead and added the hammer springs. We did it without the hammer spring first. But guys, let's see if the F4L is capable of cycling and running with subsonic ammunition. So again, still Syntec 150s. Let's see how this goes. Just like that, full magazine. Now, if I were you, I'd be saying, well, <laughs> It's a little dirtier now and it only ran one magazine. Can it run two magazines? Okay, let's find out. We'll even run these a little bit faster. Two magazines down, but I know you're still saying, well, I believe you a little bit better now, but can it run three magazines? Now, okay, if you haven't noticed, these are CA Icky Icky compliant 10 round mags. That's how I was able to get such a good deal on this weapon. Have 17 rounds, sand cutters in the mill. They did not make it in before filming. But can it run three mags and maybe we'll shoot some steel so you can hear some sound now, okay? Let's see. Three mags, no hiccups. Now, is this 110% reliable? More testing is required. We probably are gonna go ahead and change out the recoil to a Jarvis 10 pound we've got that actually, once again, was out for delivery when I was on my way to start filming, so we didn't quite have it in in time. But guys, this is a really neat setup, and hopefully from the audio recording, you can see it sounds really stinking good. I, I will dare to say this sounds a lot like when I'm plinking with a 22 pistol and a good 22 can. It is, it's just that quiet. It's such a neat setup. Remember, AB suppressor does not endorse nor support that this is a pistol suppressor. They say it is a PCC only, which is why it was designed this way. But if you tune your gun and you've got a little bit of luck to your side, you might be able to find that this runs just fine in your fixed non-tilting barrel Berettas or maybe some CZs. So let's wrap it up. All right, guys, we've got one more surprise for you. Now, it's not rated or listed on the website, but it's pretty common knowledge that if you have a good 9mm can, it's more than likely going to be A-OK -okay running something like some, say, 38 Special. Now, 38 Special is a lot lower pressure than 9mm, so we know it's going to be safe for the can. It's also about as slow as subsonic 9mm, so we know it's going to be pretty quiet. So this has been the quietest can we have. 
it ran insanely quiet on the Beretta. How quiet are we gonna be able to get it on a lever gun, guys? This is gonna be potentially the quietest of the quiet. So let's just go ahead and see how it sounds. Again, we're not gonna to try to hit anything. We're just gonna go into some dirt downrange, hit some trees, but let's see how it does. I'm gonna step and reframe just a little bit. All right, here we go. This is the stupidest quiet thing. <laughs> I don't have anything I can compare that to. That's It's quieter than 22. This is the quietest setup I have ever ran out of a suppressor. I, I don't know why AB doesn't use this as a demonstration because there's no noise. This is absolutely the stupidest quiet setup. F4L, you excel at this particular build. Let's wrap it up, guys. So guys, I've had a lot of fun with the F4L from AB Suppressor. I honestly think they knocked it out of the park with this thing. Back in the day when I was starting my suppressor journey, I always heard the Rugged Obsidian was the one to go with. You know, mine and save you the in cap strikes that are notorious for it. You're gonna RMA a lot of those. But in the end, you know, suppressors are subjective. Everyone asks for decibel ratings, and that's fine if you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to buy a decibel reader that can actually measure that. But you know, without having the full picture of the duration of impulse, you know, there's other considerations that you need to have. But what I do know about the AB suppressor F4L is that it's just insanely quiet. On everything that we shot through this, I was smiling probably the whole time. The MP5, it's the quietest can that I've ran on it. The Beretta is now my absolute favorite setup for a pistol just to run. I mean, it looks awesome, it runs awesome, it sounds awesome. Uh, I'm probably going to do a little bit more tuning. We're going to drop that another two pounds just to get it to be fully, fully, fully reliable. But it's just a pleasure to shoot. And then the surprising part, running it on the 350, or the 357-38 Special, running it on that lever gun was absolutely game-changing on how quiet a suppressor can actually perform. Now, of course, there's nothing too hard about 38 Special. It's a slow-moving round. It's going through a very long barrel. Honestly, you could probably shoot that without ears and you wouldn't be ringing, but it just wouldn't be comfortable. But this can performs admirably well on all the platforms that we test it. Now, is it a reduced blowback system? No, but did it have a lot of blowback? No, but we weren't using guns that were problematic with having blowback, like uh, a CMMG Banshee with its radial delayed blowback. That's gonna have a lot more splashback coming at you. You're gonna have a lot more puff coming back. At you. You're gonna have a lot dirtier gun. The Beretta is known for being a dirty blowback shooter, and as long as you use a direct threat system, it's supposed to tone it down a bit. Now, as the cameraman pointed out a little bit ago when I wiped off the optic, that is evidence of a lot of blowback, or at least some blowback, because the optic had gotten pretty dirty. And you can't see it, but you can see it on my thumb where I wiped it not even five seconds before we started recording. So, do I recommend this can? If you have a purpose for it, say you want to run on an MP5, I don't think it's the absolute best looking can on an MP5, but it's probably one of the best sounding cans. I don't like that it's not Trilug, and Trilug is such an important aspect when it comes to a PCC in my opinion, but the direct thread is not a game changer or a deal breaker. Direct thread just means I'm gonna leave it on whatever I put it on for a lot longer, as opposed to taking it on and off different various hosts when I go to a range day. In fact, I would probably just leave it as configured, hand it to my buddies and let them have fun. So. If you understand those limitations, if you are good with what you get from that, can I recommend this? I mean, I just have to go back and shoot it some more because guys, again, it's just that much fun. It's a quiet can. The still outrings it by a whirlwind. AB suppressors, kudos to making such a phenomenal nine millimeter can.